Thanks for watching Lessons in Minutes with J. Lee. Like, share, and don't forget to subscribe. We're going to take a look at the CXC Pass Paper for Principles of Accounts 2004. Number 5AI. Now, for this topic, which is final accounts for a sole trader, it tends to be a challenge. So I'm going to look at AI, which is the trading profit and loss account, also known as the income statement for a sole trader. But within this topic, within this question, you are required to prepare the income statement, which includes some adjustments, which are accruals and prepayments, bad debts, provision for bad debts, and depreciation. So those concepts will be coming out in this question that will be worked. So we're gonna look at the question and then we will look at the workings for that. The question read, the trial balance of busy traders at September 30, 2002 was prepared by the accountant who also provided the additional notes as shown below. So you have the trial balance with your list of balances in debit and credit, respectively, and the additional notes. There are six of them, and you are asked to prepare the following for busy traders, and you're to use correct headings. And again, we're only doing part I of the question, which is a trade and profit and loss account for the period ending September 30, 2002. Basically, what we're doing is the income statement. What we're doing is ascertaining the gross profit, which will be calculated in the trading section of the account, and the net profit, which will be calculated in the profit and loss account. So remember that the trading profit and loss account is used to determine two profits, the gross profit, which is before expenses are paid, and the net profit, which will have been after those expenses have been paid. So we're going to assess the additional notes because you are advised to assess those before you move into preparing the final account. Because guess what? You don't really want to start preparing and then you totally forget about one of these notes. And then definitely at the end of it, you'll find that you are not correct. So we're going to look at each of these. The first one is closing stock valued 9,000. This closing stock figure will be used in the trading account section, and it will also be used in part two when we're doing the balance sheet. Number two, rent paid in advance, 2,000. This value is basically related to the next accounting period. It does not relate to this accounting period. It doesn't form a part of this accounting period. So therefore, what you're going to do is to pick up the original figure, which is coming from the question from a trial balance, and that is 17,250. And then you are going to subtract that value that does not relate to this period, the amount that was paid in advance. It is not yet used up, so we are not going to report it as this accounting period. So that is 17,250 minus 2,000. And that gave us $15,250. And that is a value that we're going to use in our income statement. That represents the rent expense for the period, the value that was used up for the period. Wages and salaries accrued 1,700. Now, what you're saying is that this value was used up for the period, however, it is not yet paid. But within our income statement, when you're preparing that based on the accounting concept, you have to report that figure as a part of the current accounting period because that is a period in which it relates to. So therefore, you are going to pick up the original figure from the trial balance, which is 16,500, and then you're going to add that value of 1,700 to that to get the actual value that was used up for the period so that you can report it in the income statement. 
that is 16,500 plus that 1,700, and this gives us 18,200 for wages. Our next item is insurance accrued. Now, again, you would go to the question, pick up your insurance value, which is 1,500. And then, of course, it carries the same concept as what we had used in part three for the notes, number three for the notes, because it is accrued. So that is 1,500 plus 300, and that give us a value of 1,800. Now, before I move into number five, please note that the additional notes are used twice when you're preparing your financial statement. So you find that it is used in your income statement as well as your statement of financial position, which is your balance sheet. So these values, the 2,000 that is the 2000 that is paid in advance for rent because it is advanced payment it is a business money it will be reported as prepayments and thus it will be listed as current asset when we're doing the balance sheet the accrued values would be amount owing so those will be listed as current liabilities when we're doing the balance sheet we're now going to move into number five and that is provision for bad debt to be created 300 this tend to be a sore area for candidates and because you're creating the bad debt, same thing as your provision for doubtful debt, that will be reported as an expense for the business. Next item is depreciation on machinery and equipment for the period $1,500. $1, the amount that is in your additional notes, basically that reflects your expense for the period. So you would not use this figure that you're seeing in the trial balance. This 4,500, which represent the depreciation for machinery and equipment. Why you would not use it? This is a total value coming from the last period. So what it's saying is that up to the end of the last period, machinery and equipment are depreciated by 4,500. That is not the expense for this period. We're going to use that figure when we're doing the balance sheet. So you'll find that figure coming up when we're using the balance, doing the balance sheet, because we'll need to calculate the accumulated depreciation, which is total depreciation to date on that particular fixed asset. Back to the note, number six, depreciation on machinery. Again, this $1,500 is the value that you're gonna report in your income statement as the expense for this period. In this question, the amount was already calculated for you. You're seeing the $1,500, but there are cases where you are asked to calculate whether using the straight line method or the reducing balance method. So based on your calculation, the value that you get, that is what you would report as your expense for the period. With that said, we're going to move over to completing the income statement. Now that we have calculated all of that. So let's move into the income statement. And remember, the first thing that you are calculating is your gross profit. How do we get gross profit? That is sales less cost of goods sold. So the first thing that we need to pick up from the question is our sales figure, which is $112,500. Backtracking, ensure that your headings and the question specifically indicated that you're to use correct headings. So ensure that your, your income statement is properly labeled. And it is busy traders trading and profit and loss account for the year ended 30th of September, 2002. And remember again, we're picking up the sales figure. And from the question, the sales value is $112,500. After entering your sales figure, you need to check if the customers have returned any of the 
value of goods that were sold to them. And therefore, we are going to look if there is any return inwards because that will reduce the value of sales for the period. From the question, we're seeing that returns inwards is $2,250. So we're going to subtract that from the sales less returns inwards. And the return inwards figure, again, is $2,250. When we subtract that from the sales value, we are left with $110,250. This figure is referred to as net sales because you have adjusted the sales figure. And the next thing that we're going to move into is to calculate our cost of goods sold. Because remember, to get your gross profit, it is sales less your cost of goods sold. The cost of goods sold is also referred to as cost of sales. To calculate your cost of sales, we need to check for opening stock first. Is opening stock in the question? Yes, we have opening stock of 7,500. So we're going to record that. So that is opening stock. And the value for opening stock is 7,500. Or next step is that we need to add purchases to our opening stock. But there are times when the purchases figure is adjusted. We check for carriage inwards, which is the cost that is associated with getting the goods in the business. So that will increase your purchases. And then we need to check if there is any returns of any of these purchases. Did the business return any of the goods that it had purchased? So we have to check for returns outwards. So let's check for those three items. There is purchases of 52500 Yes, we have carriage in wars of 750. And again, that is going to increase the value of your purchases. We have returns outwards of $375. And that will be subtracted because it reduces the value of purchases. So let's adjust our purchases. So the first thing that we're going to enter is our purchases figure. And we're using the first column because we're doing our calculation there. And that is 52,500. Next, we are adding the carriage inwards. And again, the carriage inwards will increase the value of your purchases. And so you are adding that, which is associated with getting the goods into the business. That is added cost to getting the goods into the business. So therefore, you are adding. When you add your carriage inwards value of 750 to 52,500, which is your purchases, you get a total of $53,250. Remember, there was return outwards, so we're going to list returns outwards, and the returns outwards value is 375. When we subtract that value from the figure, which is 53,250, we are left with a value of 52,000. 875. Now that 52,875 is referred to as the net purchases. Net purchases, yes, because we have adjusted the purchases figure. This figure now will be added to our opening stock. Why do we add it? We add it because we want to ascertain the cost of goods the business as available for sale. So what was there from the previous period added to or purchases that we have made for this period give us the total value of what the business has for resale. Total cost of goods available for resale. So let's do our addition. The opening stock of 75 plus 52,875 give us 60,375. Our next step is to less closing less closing stock and we are subtracting the closing stock because we need to determine what is the cost of goods that were sold for this period so our closing stock is coming from the additional notes and that is $9000 so we're going to enter that 9000 
And then we are now able to determine our cost of sales, which is again, your cost of goods sold. Our cost of goods sold figure after subtracting that 9,000, which is a closing stock from the 60,375, which is the cost of goods available for a sale, we are left with 51,375. This 51,375 now, now that we have our cost of goods sold, we are able to determine our gross profit. And remember people that our gross profit is the sales less cost of goods sold. Our net sales is 110,250 and we're gonna subtract our cost of sales of 51,375. And that give us gross profit of 58,875. Now that we are at gross profit, it means that we have completed the trading account. Remember the trading account is used to determine your gross profit. Now that we have that, we can check if there is any additional revenue and subtract our expenses because our aim now is to determine the net profit. So net profit is gross profit plus revenues, any additional revenues less the expenses. From the question, having assessed that there is no additional revenue, but we do have a number of expenses. And in doing the expenses section, people remember you have to go back to your additional notes and check if there is any adjustment for any of those expenses. And remember, we had a few. So as we go along, we're going to pick up the adjustments to those respective figures, which, we, which I had looked at earlier when I focus on the additional notes. So the first expense that I'm going to pick up is once you have depreciation in the trial balance, just check if there is any, any depreciation in your, in your additional notes. And from the question, we have depreciation of 1500, which is an expense. So we're going to report that as the expense. Again, remember only only the figure from the footnotes, only the depreciated expense for this year is the expense. So you're not picking up that four or five that is in the trial balance, no. So let's go to the income statement and enter our first expense, which is depreciation and the value. We're using the middle column because we need to calculate our total expenses to be used in the main column. Depreciation is 1,500. And I need to make a note beside this that it is depreciation for machine, machinery and equipment, all right? Now I did that because there may be depreciation on other fixed assets and you have to show them separately. We're going to check our trial balance again for any other expense. We have wages and wages was adjusted. Just a reminder, the wages figure that we're going to use is 18,200. 18,200 and that is note three because we had adjusted our wages figure for the amount that is owing for the period. So wages is 18,200 dollars. Let's pick up the other expenses that we have. So just to review again, we have rent and the rent figure was adjusted. So we're using that 15,250 for rent. We have insurance. Insurance was, ad was adjusted for that amount that is accrued. And the figure that we're using for this period is 1800 because that is a figure that is related to the current financial period. We also have the provision for bad debt of 300. That is an expense. And if you check the question, you are seeing that there is 
the bad debt of 1500 that is an expense and there is another expense that we really don't want to leave out if you realize they have mixed up the items so you have to comb through your question to see if there is any additional expense and yes we have general expense of 7500 what we're going to do now is to enter all those expenses in the income statement so there is a rent of fifteen two fifty, and remember to get that rent figure. It was the original figure of seventeen thousand two fifty, and we had subtracted the amount that was prepaid of two thousand. Just showing the workings in brackets. Let me enter that value for the wages, and that is. 16,500, which is the original figure coming from a child balance. And to that, because it was accrued, we added that accrued value of 1,700. And that is what gave us the 18,200. The next expense that I will be recording is the insurance. And remember, insurance was uh, also adjusted. And the workings for that was 1500 plus the 300 that was accrued. And that gave us a total of 1800, which we're using in the income statement because that's the total value that was used up by busy traders for the financial period. The provision for bad debts, people, remember, because this was created, it is an expense. I have a working question where there is an increase and where there is a reduction because where is that there is an increase, the increased value is the expense. But if there is a reduction, the reduced value is a revenue. So I have a working question to bring out that concept. So you have to be careful with your provision for bad debt because you can, it can be created the first time it has been introduced in the business, that is an expense. Years after, it may increase or decrease. And you have to know to treat that. Now, the figure that we're using for the creation of the provision for bad debt is 300. And again, that is expense. Bad debt is also an expense and that is $1,500. And the final expense coming from the question is general expenses. And that value is $7,500. Having entered all the expenses, our next aim is to determine the total expense. Because guess what? We need to ascertain the net profit. And to get net profit, it is gross profit less. The expenses in this question, because there is no revenue. If there was revenue, you would add the revenue, then you lesser expenses. So we have to generate our total. expenses and the total expense is forty six thousand and fifty dollars now people what you could have done instead of entering the total expense in a separate row you could have put it directly right here but it's just that you would not be able to label it but once it falls directly in this section then of course we know that you have entered your total expenses. So either way, you can put it where this red rectangle is, or you could label it in the next row and enter the value in that very same row. So once we have our total expenses, as indicated earlier, what we're going to do is subtract that from the gross profit, and that would now give us the net profit. So our net profit is $12,825 after subtracting that $46,050 from the gross profit of $58,875. And tell you what, we have come to the end of preparing the trading profit and loss account for busy traders, which was taken from the past paper, May 
2004, number five. In another session, I'll be looking at part two, which is a statement of financial position. And definitely I'm talking about the balance sheet. Like, share, and don't forget to subscribe.